This is the show San Diego needs and deserves. The San Diego Highlighter Show. Highlighting music, food, entertainment, local business, and more. Keeping you in the know everything that's Dago. Here's your hosts, Todd and Serena. All right, and welcome to the San Diego Highlighter Show. Welcome back, welcome back. Uh, I'm Todd James, the native son of San Diego, and joined alongside me is so Cal Serena. I know, I guess I earned a nip, nickname. You're, you know, I felt bad because I had like a longer one. And I was like, Todd James, a native son of San Diego and Serena. Yeah. <laughs> you needed a little something. But I'm, you are so, so Cal that it's so Cal Serena. <laughs> I, I, I'll go with that one. I'll it, go with that one. We, uh, welcome back, everybody. We had a good time last time. We had a, a lot of people watched our video. I know. I mean, for the first time, that was pretty good i was very happy with the viewership shout out again to trio and gastronaut status clothing and shout who won the who won the sweatshirt somebody won the sweatshirt oh yeah actually um king butler on instagram won the sweatshirt and he was very excited for it congratulations king butler that's a nice <laughs> i'm jealous i wanted the sweatshirt but we couldn't win it was like family and friends need not apply can't blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I mean, we we're in, the only we two that literally can't play. The only yeah. two. And stay tuned because we do have a give giveaway at the end of today's show. And we are hitting you today with a double dose of Dago. Tonight's our guests are iconic radio host, Co Lewis, and also legendary San Diego band, Sled. And the cool thing about these two guests is uh, along with rock historian Swell Ozzy, they come together like Voltron and they form Swell Radio, RFUA, Radio for Unsigned Artists. Well, let's get to our first guest. She does all those things and more, and also is the co-host of Coexists. Her voice has been heard on airways for decades here in San Diego. She was voted one of the 20 most important personalities in California radio. She has introduced legendary rock and roll performers to San Diego and Southern California, like uh, Blink One, Eddie Vedder, Blink-182, and Jewel. She has interviewed Robert Plant, Bruce Springsteen, uh, Van Halen, ACDC, amongst others. Um, she uh, She's also, I, I just learned this is pretty cool, she's also in a little uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, San Diego Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, yeah. right down the street from me at Vinyl Taps. Yeah. Welcome, everybody. Co Lewis. Thank Woo! you. Thank you for having me on show number two. I'm honored. Oh, this is awesome, too. I'm and it's very like, honored. Turn the mic around, because yeah. usually I'm your sound engineer for, I know. for Swell Radio. I know. Well, congrats on your show here, and I'm excited to be here. It's going to be fun. Thank you very much. Sure. So one thing I've noticed uh, right away when we've started doing the show is that not too many of our guests so far ha are from San Diego, born here. You were originally from Texas. Yes, born in Houston. So I want to start doing a new thing where it's like, how did you get to Dago? <laughs> Everything's got a little song, a there little, you go. little hook on, on it. Radio mind. I like know, it. Cliche and all. So how did you get to Dago? Well, actually, I uh, moved here from Chicago. I had gotten married and my ex-husband had gotten a job out here uh, with, do you remember K-Pro Computers? This goes way back. No. They had the okay. first portable computer that weighed about 82 tons, but it was portable. They have wheels. And they were, had wheels. <laughs> yeah. But they were based in Solana Beach, and okay. that brought me out here. And um, I've, I've never left. And when was that? 1985. Okay, yeah. I was still in the ovaries. Okay, so okay. you were a little young. <laughs> a little young. Don't remember. But yeah, so 1985, and I, I've been here ever since. Nice. Yeah. So how did you get into radio yourself? Completely out of left field. So um, I had been uh, kind of doing two careers. I had been modeling at the time. I had also been working at the Chicago Board of Trade, but when we moved out here, obviously, the Board of Trade was not happening. And I really was wanting to find another career and see what I could do. And I ended up um, going to a temp agency and ended up becoming the office manager for a law firm. Hated it. <laughs> hated it. I thought, what What am I doing here? This is not me. But I used, this is a true story. It, it's strange, but it's true, like how you can kind of project and predict where you want your life to go so i used to sit in the office and in the afternoons i used to listen to the crossover between sue delaney and long john leslie and i kept thinking man that's the greatest job in the world that's the greatest job in the world and i want to do that 
I want to do afternoons. I want to do exactly what they're doing. And I don't know. Uh, I know an awful lot about music. Maybe I can do their music one day. I didn't even know the name of the title, which would become music director. I just said, I want to do their music one day. I said, I'm going to work there. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to find a way. And I started, I went to a little radio broadcast school on Claremont Mesa Boulevard. I think it was Bill Wade School. Two guys from KSON worked there and heard my work and said, you know, you you ought, you've got something going on. Why don't you come to KSON? So I started there. Wow. And I remember when I first got there, I said, I just want you to know, I want, I'm happy to work here, but I'm going to work at KGB. So that's my end game. As long as everybody knows, that's where I'm going to go. And I ended up getting at KGB by 86 is nice. when I got there. And, and yeah. was it was your uh, eye set on KGB because of your love of classic rock? I loved the format. I loved okay. the artists. It's what I grew up with. And I just loved the whole vibe of the station. They just, they owned the market. They were so huge at the time. They were a station of the year. They were just so impactful. And I just clicked with it. it I felt like it was my home for some reason right even before I knew anything about radio I felt I needed to be there and so I actually just willed my way into there I wasn't going to take it over <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome I think the program director I bugged him so much with my air checks he probably just gave up and said okay yeah I'll get you a job <laughs> just shut up leave me alone but that's that's how I got to KGP well obviously you have a love for music yes and you know so much you're so knowledgeable when you do your your show at KCBQ, you just like uh, an encyclopedia of music. Where did that love of music come from? I think because my sisters are seven and nine years older than me, I was raised on their music. So I had a very early introduction. I mean, literally as a baby, just growing up, I was introduced to all these bands. Um, because I was raised overseas um, and, you know, when my sisters went off to college, you know, high school and other countries, I was by myself, so I just took it upon myself to learn a lot about music. I was just learning and, you know, just kind of a nerdy kid who loved music. And I, I just loved to learn, but I just had a, a natural feel. I, I always was interested in learning about music, so it was something I did my whole life. I had an uncanny amount of knowledge for not being in the industry. I, like, had crazy, like, trivia, like, you just ask me anything about Led Zeppelin, I can tell nice. you. And I'm like, what am I going to do with all this trivia? Well, it turns out it really worked having a, a radio career because I could talk about it. You have one of those brains that I'm real jealous of because I don't have that. Seriously? I, 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 yeah, I'm not really good with remember remembering band names and who is in what band and whatnot. I think if you love it, it's easier to remember. I there think you if you're passionate about something, you'll retain whatever it is, whatever you're passionate about. That's good. So you, you were at KSON and you went to KGB. Mm -hmm. what, what's the weirdest shift that you've worked in radio? Well, I did I did overnights because did overnights. It, overnights were live back in the day and it was the shift where like, as they say, nothing good ever happens after midnight. And that is really true. So I would get all the crazy calls, all the drunk calls, all the bars were letting out, ah, you know. So it was you were your always, own yeah, oh, it was always entertaining whatever I got every overnight. It was crazy. That's funny. Really crazy. Everyone has to pay their dues in radio. Yeah. I, I've worked, I've been in radio now for about 15 years and I've worked every shift. Every shift. Overnight, split shifts, weekends. And um, I feel badly for people coming into radio now because everything's pre-recorded. Yes. So you never have the, you don't get to build that bond with listeners. Like I've had listeners who I literally have grown up with for 35 years, I've known them. And I feel sorry for, you know, new jocks because they never get to have that connection with people. The listeners are what it's all about. Yeah. They, you, they are your they are the reason why you're there. And when you develop these really deep bonds with them and you see them having kids or suffer losses and you go through life with them, it's a very extraordinary experience. And I, I'm sad that radio is not that way anymore. Yeah, and it makes it hard because, uh, like you said, you know, there's no overnight shift anymore. And that yeah. used to be that's what people that it's were first getting in. Your chops. Hey, I'll do it. I'll oh, do yeah. it overnight. I w when I was at 102.1, and the uh, the overnight guy came in at four o'clock to do his voice tracks, mm -hmm. 
I'm like, what, what What? What do you mean he does? He, oh, yeah, they're all pre-recorded. Yeah. You front sell, you back sell. Yeah. So you don't do the live calls. You don't. Well, and then after a while, um, sorry, after a while, they purchased the Dan Aykroyd Blues Hour mm-hmm. or Blues Program, which then now it's syndicated. Yeah. So now, now you don't even have a local guy doing yeah. voiceover stuff. You have one guy selling a program to 100 stations. Well, I was going to say this. Another sad part, too, is with radio. I mean, personally, I don't know. In my generation, I don't know anybody who's listening to radio still. It's all podcasts, like, or, you know, if it's on Apple Music, Spotify, yeah. or YouTube. Mm-hmm. You know, um, radio, I mean, I don't know your opinion. Do you think it's kind of I, dying? Radio is, is definitely on the decline. There is no doubt about it. You have so many sources now for entertainment. Your phone, like you said, you know, you can download stuff, your computer. Radio is really, they are trying, they're desperately trying to reinvent themselves or trying to stay relevant. Mm -hmm. And it's very challenging. That's why, you know, with the, under the auspices of COVID, all these massive layoffs have happened. So you have these big conglomerates now with 80 people who are running all the markets and it's the same voice in every single Mm -hmm. town you go into. It's becoming very homogenized. You know, I don't, I don't like knocking the company I worked with because I was really blessed and I feel so fortunate to have it and, you know, develop a, a, a be blessed with a great career. I would never, I would never say anything negative about radio because I was so blessed by it and I know a lot of people did, but I'm sad, but because the old radio is gone. It's yeah. changed. Yes. It's just a different beast right it's now. It's still here, and it's not going anywhere, really, no. because ever since the advent of the TV, people said radio's going to die off, but it just reinvents itself. Yeah, it reinvents itself. Yeah. There yeah. are some podcasts that are on the radio, but every single radio show podcasts their show. Yeah. So Yeah, you know. so it's a, whole, it's a whole different world, and I still have friends who are in it, and they are adapting and adjusting to what's expected of them. You have to adapt or you become extinct, yeah. you know? Well, you interviewed some very interesting people. We, we talked about it on the intro. Can you give us, can you share us a memorable moment when you're doing a live broadcast on site? Do you have some crazy oh. story of... Oh, yeah, I've had, I've had artists like all of a sudden make out with me. <laughs> All of a sudden, like all of a sudden, just me. I'm like, what? In the middle of a question? Yeah, just just like leaning over, like, and I'm like, uh, uh, how do you get out of this one gracefully? Like, uh oh. <laughs> and it is radio too. So did you describe it? Like so and so is leaning like, into me now. All you can hear was me place. laughing. I'm still giggling over because it was like a little embarrassing. Like what? When We're, you make out on radio, do you hear like? It, it was just weird. All you could hear me <laughs> saying is like, what? What's what? Yeah, it was a little. Yeah, I've had some really strange stuff. I've had um. Uh, girlfriends and wives of artists like 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 threaten me oh. if I made any move on their significant other. I'm like, look, I'm just here to work. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about anybody else. Sorry, I'm just gonna look you're at my all questions. good. Yeah, when we're all good. He's all yours. Okay. I'm just here to work. It's, you know, so I'm a girl. But yeah, I've had some really strange you, stuff. You know, because so being a woman in the you know in the rock and roll atmosphere, do you think it was easier or harder because of that? Um, I think in rock, women do do well because you're dealing with rock guys, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like they they gravitate towards women, but also, um, you could, if you didn't know your stuff, mm-hmm. if you weren't, if you didn't have your chops and know your stuff, you would be easily called out on it. You know what I mean? I really worked hard to be completely professional, Mm -hmm. um, do my job, be very well informed, you know, I'd study things. And so if you're prepared and you you take your job seriously, they really respect that. They do respect that. You know, they can be kooks and and fun, but if if you know your stuff, you will get the best interview out of them, yeah. Have you ever hooked up with anybody you've interviewed? I've, I've been offered, but I declined. If, and I declined because of two reasons. I wasn't raised that way. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I was raised to be a lady and do your job and be professional. And I didn't want, I mean, I worked so hard. I mean, I came through the trenches of overnights and yeah. doing every shift and never having days off. I thought, I'm not going to throw that away and get a, a reputation, you know, or any gossip about it. I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't. It just wasn't me. I was flattered. I'd say thanks for thinking of me, but you know, I'm 
not really going to do that. <laughs> that that's so, funny. Yeah. If you could have if you could have one interview to do over, a read a redo and ask one more question that you sit sometimes and think, "Man, I wish I would have asked them this or after knowing this, it, can you think of any interview you'd, you'd like to redo?" Um no, I think I would have liked to, I, I had in my, because Robert Plant is like my guy, everybody in radio knows that, mm -hmm. Zeppelin is my band. Um, he totally caught me off guard. My, my boss knew I would be nervous if Robert Plant was calling me to do an interview, so he didn't even tell oh. me about it. So this, this British guy calls on the hotline, <laughs> and I was having just a horrible day. I was having a horrible day. And, you know, he's, he said, hello, I'm supposed to speak with, with Co. Lewis. And I said, hello, this is Co. And I'm, like, mimicking him back, like, being a complete smartass, like, having no idea so who's, like, funny. on the phone. Yeah. I thought somebody was messing with me. <laughs> and it turns out it's Robert Plant. Oh, my God. I Oh, my God. I, I wanted to crawl under the console. I was, I was so mortified. I said, hang on. Hang on. So I came back on as a completely different character, like it was somebody else who answered That's the phone. I was smart. I thought, oh my god, I have to salvage my 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 love for Robert Plant. He'll think I com I'm a complete idiot because I was being a complete that jerk. Is like, funny. hello, would you like to have some tea? <laughs> <laughs> Such a jerk. And, and finally, he goes, when he explained, he goes, um, it's Robert Plant. I'm I'm supposed to do an interview with Co. Lewis, and I'm like. God, like I forgot the page and plant were coming like in a couple of days, so they were calling. That's <laughs> funny. I had yeah. I had uh, so Jewel, we were talking about mm -hmm. Jewel earlier. Mm -hmm. She I was the backup emergency line for mm -hmm. uh, on one oh two point one when I worked mm -hmm. with Madison, Madison mm -hmm. in the mornings. So he was doing an interview with Dana Carvey, so the line was busy. So she called my cell phone and I'm thinking it's one of my friends and I'm like, ah, they know I work mornings and stuff. So I'm like, Hello? What? And she's like, Oh, is this Todd? I'm like, Yeah, what is it? I'm really busy. <laughs> She's like, well, this is Jewel, and I was scheduled for an interview. I'm like, Ugh. oh, sorry, my yeah. bad. Yeah, you so. know, I um, Jewel played at a, a fundraiser I had in um, Hillcrest for one of my animal fundraiser things. Nice. And Steve Poltz was there, and this was before awesome. she really broke out. Okay. So this is when she had her she had her her moccasin knee high boots, and you know she was very bohemian looking. Um, right before this all broke out it was really crazy because once she broke out like like um entertainment tonight were calling me for video footage and i'm like what what they're like you know because she just exploded yeah. she just exploded so yeah so go back with joel many many moons ago Did you ever hear the story of steve poltz and her going down to surf in mexico and being uh woken up by the federales I don't think so. Great story. Oh, great story. He, he's he's great, told it many times. He is a great storyteller. It, it ends. Steve Pulse. It ends with, and you'll, you can find it somewhere out there. But there's pictures on his Facebook. A picture of him and Joel holding like Russian AK-47s <laughs> with a van full of pot behind oh them, God. surrounded by federales. What could possibly so, go wrong? Yeah. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. He's a great interview. Yeah, so who's the most hungover person you've ever interviewed where it was just so noticeable? Oh, there have been multiple. <laughs> there have been, like, like I always, I always giggle because last, you know, before I saw Sammy Hagar the last time, prior to that, he came up and gave me a hug, and I felt like I was being hugged by a tequila sponge. Like, seriously, <laughs> literally. And, and he's just so much fun. And But I'm like, oh, my God, he just was... It was coming out of his pores. I mean, when you got a tequila company, that's what you do. Yeah. But I thought, I think I just got hugged by a tequila sponge. I'm pretty sure. Have you ever had somebody that was so out of it, you asked them a question and they answered something to, like way off, like not even a, a question you asked? Well, every once in a while, you'll get a really dud interview. Like you work so hard to get something out of them. Just anything, just any kind of emotion. It's like, and they'll give you one word answer. It's like, yeah, uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, boy. And you hear crickets. You're just thinking, yeah. oh, my God, this is going to be the longest <laughs> interview of my life. And it, it probably was. So, yeah. Who, uh, well, next question. <laughs> I'll let you ask this one, Serena. No, yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, so oh. So, uh, here's oh. something. I, I even wore a perfect shirt for it. Mm -hmm. So, who's the biggest dick you interviewed? Can you because give names? You mean like a jerk, like like yeah, not not like actual <laughs> phallus, yeah, yeah, yeah but like, like 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 super jerk, like, yeah. like a super jerk. That yeah. you wouldn't mind saying. Um, 
I'll tell you, Springsteen was dating Patty Sealfer or Skelfer, however you say her name. She just frightens me is all I know. She was not pleasant at all. Really? Oh, no. And she, they, he, I think he was still married at the time, and she was like, Lumino, she was just, oh, she frightened me. Like, I wanted to run crying home. She was <laughs> frightening. I, yeah. Like, I'm like, why are you being like such a jerk i don't even know you you know i'm just doing an interview yeah she was pretty frightening you know it doesn't make sense like you you'd think when you're dating somebody to the who's you know famous you're gonna deal with groupies you're gonna deal with you know everything that comes with it like you signed up for that yeah and you can't just automatically assume everybody no. especially in the professional world be like, gracious i mean be be pleasant because like you'll meet sometimes the other half and they're fabulous and you can see totally why they're with that person i mean why do you have to be mean like if so insecure i'm like Ugh. yeah but um she really stands out i'm just trying to think i don't think i've really um had any real jerks Actually, they've been That's pretty good. good. Yeah, That's it's just a nice. significant other. I, oh, I've had multiple of those. And they're frightening. I like frightening. Well, on another topic, uh, we know you're really passionate about animal conser mm -hmm. uh, conservation. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your show, Coexist. Coexist is a podcast I started in uh, 2020. And, you know, I started an anti poaching foundation based in Zambia oh, in wow. 2015. So I'm co founder. Um, we've got our own ranger team. We've, we're building our second school um, to teach the kids about conservation. We've started a women's sewing program and a beekeeping program. So, you know, this is, I was raised in Africa. I have a heart for animals and conservation. And I was watching what was unfolding in Africa. And I literally, I, it would literally keep me up at night. And Jeez. God just kind of put um, Victory Wallace in my path. She lives here and she is owned a safari lodge in Zambia her husband called me and said you got to meet my wife so we ended up co-founding this together and now I'm a minor owner in a safari lodge in Zambia as well so oh. I, I'm really I'm I'm fully committed to fighting extinction because you know we're losing 100 elephants a day six rhinos a, a day? day yeah a day yeah wow. from from crime syndicates mostly Asian crime syndicates preying on the poverty in Africa and they go in and pay a few bucks and these people because they're so poor will kill an elephant but what they don't realize is they are stealing their future mm -hmm. because when the animals are gone from africa that continent will completely economically collapse it will be gone yeah it'll be gone so you know you just have to show people the value of their animals and look at them differently and why you know, poaching is really stealing their future. It's stealing their country. So, yeah. Wow. yeah. That's, that's very cool that you do that. Very well, thank admirable. You. I know thank you. that it's, it must be a lot of work. It's I a lot of work. Sometimes you come into the studio and you're, you're stressed. And stressed, yeah. You know, it's I've got a, a foundation across the globe. And um, so going back to the podcast, I started Coexist because I knew how hard it was to have a foundation and raise awareness and raise money. I mean, it's really difficult. So I thought, you know what? I want since I've got a platform, I've got a 35-year career and I've got some people who who are aware of who I am. If I can do good by others and raise awareness of their foundations, then we all have the same end game. We're trying to save these animals. So if I can help them, we all win. You know, the animals win. So I've had um, Craig Spencer of the Black Mambas I've got um, uh, Leif Cox from the Orangutan Project coming up. I've oh, had wow. Captain Paul Shepard. Oh, yeah. Know, oh, Sea Shepherd. Paul yeah. Watson of Sea Shepherd. Nice. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's been really great. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. I have one more question sure. for you. What significance does the date October 11th have for you? October 11th. Um, I don't know. That's your day. Oh, that's... That's, that's your day. That's right. That's officially... Co Lewis Day in San Diego. Yeah, I forgot about that. I think that is so cool. Thank you. I'm I'm very honored and very touched. I was really. Hey girl, you have your own day. I got my own day. Yeah, I, I, I trust me. I'm as 
geeked out about it as any, you know, I was I'm completely overwhelmed by it. Yeah, I was very honored and touched. So well, thank you. On, on that day, I'll listen to some Zeppelin. Right on. There you go. So and thank you very much for coming on the thank show. Thank you for You're, having me. We're going to have you back in the last segment Great. for a game we call How Dago Are You? How Dago Are You? And am also, I? Co, let me say one thing. If you ever make a group in Africa called Hunt the Hunters, are you in? I'm. I want to lead it. <laughs> you, will you be my president? I'll be the president. Okay, you got a job, so get ready for it. And get be, ready. Before you leave uh, on this segment, also, how can people listen to Coexist? Oh, they can go to iqpodcast.com. Uh, we also do a uh, video portion, which we put on Facebook on the IQ Podcast page, or I share it on my page, and that's Co Lewis, C O E L E W I S. We'll make and sure to put the links in the Thank you. Show, I appreciate it. Thanks, you guys. Thank you, Co. Thanks Thank for you, having Co. me on. I'm very glad. All right, and welcome back to San Diego Highlighter Show. I'm still Todd James, the native son of San Diego, and she is still SoCal, SoCal Serena. Serena. Hey, I like that name. Nice, and we're here with our second guest of the evening, the band Sled. Welcome, Sled. Thank you. Thanks a lot. We got, Thanks for having us. We got Dino, Pete, and Kerry. Thanks, guys. You guys are three of five of the members of Sled, correct? Absolutely. Actually, we're the three original members. Three original members. Of nice. the band that have done every record and done every kind of video and everything and anything that had to do with Sled. It's the three of us. Awesome. The, fa- the founding fathers. The founding and we fathers. want to give a shout out to our guitar player and vocalist, Mike Failer, and uh, bassist vocalist, Drew Zolo, our current compadres working with the band. We're working yeah. on a new album and doing some new, new neat stuff for 2021. So. I actually got to meet them and got to hang out at the rehearsal last Friday. I was very blessed. Thank you guys for letting me hang around. It's oh, I was sure fiending for some live music, and uh, that sure did the job, man. Um, some of your songs on your new album uh, were stuck in my head all weekend, so I think your new album is going to cool. be uh, very. It's going to be a good uh, a success. You know, we put these new guys in the band recently, probably in the last couple of years. And they both turned out to be gems, both of them. Awesome. Nice. Great addition. Doesn't always work that way. I mean, yeah. we've gotten people that have come through the door that maybe last six months, oh, three really? months, half a year. Is it because of Pete? They can't, they no, can't stand. no, I just. <laughs> like, fuck it, this it's, guy. It's I'm the, out of here. It's the work ethic. The people <laughs> yeah. don't want to work. It's, it's, you know? it's his work. It's not and all And then they want instant success. And then, uh, oh, we know uh, you guys have done this, you guys have done that. Well, you know what? The reason why we've done this and that. We work our ass off. Yeah. yeah, but we also have a formula. So, you know, it's hard sometimes to get a uh, square peg into a round hole, so to speak. So sometimes the guys you pick might be Is great players. But they, uh, I, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we get any further, we're gonna, there's the part where we say, how did you get the day go? How did you guys come to San Diego? Pete and I pretty much followed my dad and my mother out here. My mom probably very sick woman so we knew that she wasn't going to live more than two or three years and she you, wound up living almost three extra years wow we and, came from uh, from new york and, and that, my dad wanted to retire here. by the hudson well yeah we lived we lived there we lived in the city we lived throughout the westchester county the suburbs the bronx we lived all over the tri-state area did you ever go ice skating on sugar pond yes we did did you ever go swimming in the chemica pool Chemka, Chemka pool. pool. Chemka yeah. pool. All right. Yeah, sure go, did. There you go. Nice. He did a little research. Yeah, a little, huh? Just a little bit. Just In a little fact, bit. there's a song on the last album called Float Me a Raft, The Raft. We, we wrote about building a raft when we were 10 on years old and sailing across on Sugar Pond. Pond. And really? We, and we actually did it. We wow. fell in a few times trying. Oh, geez. Uh, so, was, so from one coast to the other. Well, Absolutely. and you know, the cool thing is... Um, Carrie's experienced all the places we grew up. Oh, really? Yeah, Carrie's been back to oh, yeah. Hastings. Nice. He's back to Irvington. Knows all the East Coast friends. Know that's how this whole Swell Radio got developed. Is him and Ozzy been talking 10, 15 years ago about Ozzy? You got this great radio voice. One day I'm gonna we're gonna open up a radio station or a show, and I want you to be the co-star. And that's where Swell Radio came from. Because one of Ozzy's Very nicknames cool. is Swell Ozzy. Okay. Well, so. that, that's part of the story. But the other part of the story is these guys would do like hardcore like prank calls. And it was so intense one night that I couldn't believe that, that Dean and, and, and Ozzy were literally from San Diego able to get people out of the hotel in Florida freaking out outside. OK, <laughs> and these guys is this is riot. So I said, hey, we got to do some kind of radio show. And we said swell radio, obviously. So but it was it was emphasized around 
crank prank calls, oh, yeah. basically. Sweet. Are you, are you from Southern California? Yeah, I'm, all, all my life, yeah. 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 What brought you to Dago? Um, my mom had me uh, in Carson City, Nevada. Um, about a month later, she came to San Diego to start teaching. So, nice. Dago much. enough. Yeah, Dago enough. Dago yeah. enough. One thing I love about Kerry, he's always rocking Padre gear. Oh, absolutely. So, man, props on that, brother. The problem with me, boss, is 21 years living yeah. outside the Bronx. Yeah. It just, it was <laughs> contagious, man. The first time he came in the studio, I noticed that. And the first thing I thought of was 1998. And yeah, I, get <laughs> then, I was actually there when the Yankees won. Then Pete and I actually wound up becoming friends with Bernie Williams, Shane Spencer. Oh, wow. Uh, Dave Wells. And, yeah, Dave Wells. Know, he went to play for the Yankees. There's, All there's our San two, Diego guys. Yeah. There's three or four guys that, that pitched a no-no for the Yankees, and two of them Point Loma High went to Point Loma High School. Yeah. Tom but, Larson yeah. and David, David Wells. Wells. Yes. Nice, yeah. David, David Wells was May 17th, 1998. Yeah, okay. Perfect wow. game. All right. I'm hardcore nice. Yankee boss. I, I, I hit a 500-foot home run out of out of uh, Point Loma High School with a, with a metal bat in, in the right field. Right nice. Yeah, Heck yeah. So David Wells was raised by... His stepdad was called Red Dog. Okay. And his stepdad was a Hell's Angel. Oh, all right. So we're at a Journey show, I want to say 20 years ago, and I'm with a member, a guy named John Teakin, and uh, we're hanging out at this Journey concert. And backstage. all of a sudden, we're backstage. Wellesie comes over to Teakin and Damo, and he goes, hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? And John goes, you know you know, Dino? He goes, I don't think so. He goes, this is a good friend of our club, you know, from our club. And Dave Wells, you know, the New York Yankee. I go, what? I turn around, and it's David Wells, wow. the boomer. And so uh, we kind of hit it off, and he's a drummer. Oh, really? Cool dude. Nice. You know? And then what happened was he wound up, when he retired, becoming the pitching coach at Point Loma High School for his son the last couple of years. Oh, I didn't the know that. baseball oh, yeah. coach, actually. Yeah. The baseball and coach, the, yeah. I mean, I don't think he's doing it. I think he's out as of last year, but Wells, he's a cool dude. Come to find out, he's like Vince Neal's best friend. Oh, really? Yeah, from Motley Crue. Yeah. So, wow, that's very cool. Very it's, cool. It's, and then one night we're playing out at this place called the Flynn Springs Inn, and uh, Pete is talking to this girl named Heidi, and she's like, they notice my arm, and she says to Pete, "You, you and your brother are from New York?" And he goes, "Yeah." And he goes, you know, and she goes, "You know my husband, who he was," and she says his name, Shane Spencer. I'm like, oh, he said, oh, "Yeah, yeah hell sure. yeah, we know your, Shane your Spencer was on those Yankee old fans. Yeah, yeah, we know Shane." That's awesome. Well, you'll appreciate this. Shane's with his two buddies that he grew up with and went to Granite with, Marcus Giles and Brian Giles. Oh, the Giles brothers. So all they're right. all hanging out. They came in from Alpine where they all live, and they're rock and roll fanatics. Wow. Very they love cool. rock and roll, ACDC. Good guys. So since you guys came Throwing f- money, you know. S- since you guys came from New York, do you think the band has a little New York attitude? Well, I think um, when your heart and soul of something... And like Kerry's been back to New York so many different times, and a lot of his friends from the East Coast, he pretty much adapted our attitude. Okay. And and when Kerry got into being a broker, he was trained by a bunch of New Yorkers, and like yeah. it was it was like infectious. So as much as he didn't want to deal with it, he had Nikki. He was buying leads from. He had to deal with Peter. He had to deal with me and my mm-hmm. brother and Gazzy. all these people. This oh, poor yeah. guy was like surrounded by New York. New Yorkers. So. My, so when we went back to the new Yankee Stadium, when it reopened in 09, yeah. the year they won the World Series last. That's right. Ozzy, no. Was it Ozzy? It was Ozzy, yeah. me, Bucky, yeah. and Kerry were going to the Yankee game. And so we buy these tickets. And the guy sells these tickets to my brother. All of a sudden, we turn around, and this dude's sprinting. Okay? Oh, they that's not a good so sign. They were so perfectly duped. They're fake. The whole year, all of my life I lived in New York. Uh, I never got ripped off. I knew uh, I come back like it's like a transplant. <laughs> like a miser, <laughs> and I get smoked for like 400 oh, <laughs> Well, I, this is the best part of this. So uh, I They I'm did a, look real. Even even the uh, cops came over. The transit guys were like, oh, man, these two look really good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but the only problem was the ticket guys like, sorry, you guys aren't getting in. Uh, they were like, oh, So wow. just by coincidence, you know, I, I spent a lot of time in the Bronx and there's this dude I recognized. His name was Ruben. And I'd known Ruben for years on and off in the Bronx. So I, I'm screaming his name and he walks over. He goes, yo, D, what's up, man? What are you doing down here? These guys still think I live in New York at the time. I'm like, nah, dude, I moved to Dago. And said, what? I go, yeah. I go, what are you doing? He goes, I'm still selling tickets, dog. I'm a <laughs> ticket <laughs> scalper. <laughs> so I said, dude, we just got clipped for 300 bucks. He said, let me hook what? you guys up. He really? goes, dude, he goes, D, we're all friends, right? I go, yeah. He goes, how would you guys like to sit and back a home plate? What? Yeah. And I'm like, what? I go, dude, we ain't got that kind of money. He goes, dude, check it out. 
75 bucks a ticket. <laughs> you, Carrie, Pete, and Swell Ozzy, I'll have you guys back a home plate. I go, what? dude, how you doing? We dude, sat I... upstairs for like an inning, and he shows, he rolls through the door, and he goes, come on, man, follow me. It's we a win. New York thing, man. It's That's great. awesome, man. By the third inning, we're behind home plate, man. Like, I don't know, four so every rows time we went back to the, the field. To, we've been back a couple different times to go to games. I call Ruby. He meets me in front of yep. like the thirty five bucks. The bat. We Boom. took right our cousins. We took everybody. All our cousins are like, "No way, you know this." And I'm like, "We got this. Watch this." That's fine. <laughs> so then he calls me up in like I want to say oh eleven. He goes, "Hey D, I'm coming out to Dago for like a week. Can I stay with you?" I and go, "Absolutely, bro." Go to the Padres. Yeah, and man, you know, like he had the time of his life. He swimming it. in my pool every day. He goes. Hey man, I want to move out here now. I go, hey bro, you got to get a real. You can't. There's none of this ticket yeah, scalping like down in the Bronx. Yeah, bro. ain't gonna work. That don't fly over here, man. <laughs> yeah, there you go. No. He goes, well, you know what, man? Like I'll come out and visit all the time. I go, sure, come on out. Nice. So last time I saw him was oh seventeen. I went back and there he was. Well, good thing he gave you those the, tickets because hooked it up and one charged me a dime more than seventy five bucks. Dago. There you go. And I mean, we're sitting practically right on the field. That's you know? nice. He hit it off with Kerry. I and saw Pete. an A Rod home run. Right, right we saw A Rod hit two away. home runs in one inning. Wow. Yeah. He got the bat twice around, and he hit two home great. runs. Remember that, Kerry? Yeah. Against Seattle. Yeah, that was cool. That was crazy, dude. You know. You know, I'm not gonna lie. I know absolutely nothing <laughs> about <laughs> anything you guys are it's talking right. about. <laughs> so, um, out of curiosity, how have the current sled members though been playing together? Twenty six years. Wow. And wow. I can do this. This is even more. Before we, well, we still have a cover band called Nemesis. Mm -hmm. And I want to say in 93, Kerry came around. And in 95, he was our singer. Actually, 94, Kerry sang for us. And he stayed in the band probably till 97, 94 to 97. So he started going on the road with us to Reno, Nevada, mm -hmm. Vegas, all these different places. Well, in 95, we decided, hey, bro. We ain't going to do, you can only do so much playing cover songs in yeah. a band, you know. And we said, you know, we want to take this and try to write our own songs and put out a record. So he was game for it. We so, took uh, we took our current bass player at the time, Doug Johnson. He was an original member of SLED. And we met uh, a guy named uh, Mike Feminelli, Mike Gruen, a shredding guitar player. I don't even know. How, I don't even know how we. Here's how we, we met, met him. We met him from this dude John Thompson who was playing golf with. Was, yeah. But come to find out, Kerry and this Mike Gruen guy grew up together. They knew each other really well. So I said, Kerry, what do you? Mean? He goes, this dude's badass, bro. I'm bringing him into the band. I said, really? So we were rehearsing in like one of these 24-hour storage places. Okay. And Kerry brings this dude over to my house. I would like to be in the band. I can <laughs> shred. I'm better than everybody. Are you crazy? This is how he talked. <laughs> Great musician. He's a very wealthy construction guy. Now he owns his own company. He's like, dude, I'm having kids. I'm going to just bang nails. And I want to just do construction the rest of my life. So he bailed. I want to say he was in the band of 05. Ten years he played. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did two records with us. He did okay. Doug you know did two. I mean? Yeah, Doug did the two. Doug did two records with us. And then our third record which we started working with the guys in the band Tesla was, we went up to Sacramento, we wrote a bunch of songs, and Pete had put his friend Eric Meyer, a great guitar player in the band, and Kerry brought this guy, he was in another cover band with, named Steve Mua. He was in his band 619, and, we, and Steve was an old friend of mine and my brother's. So the other guys had pretty much retired out of music, and Kerry and Pete kept the band going, and they brought these new guys in, and we toured with them and wrote a record with them. It was cool. Well, and that's how the, the thing just kept going. It was like... Who worked the deal to tour with Tesla? Pete. Pete. And so, Pete, when he told these guys... When, when Pete told you... Kerry, so, there's a story, though, behind it. So, so I was uh, talking with uh, Rod Kluka, who was one of the a a head of A&R at Columbia, and John Weakland was A&R a at, at, uh, at um, Sony. Friends of mine, you know, they work in the record business. So I kept sending them demos, and, and like, man, you know... We dig what you guys are doing. We're digging the music, but you know, I think we need to work with a producer. You never heard of a guy named Brian Weed? I go, yeah, the bass player from Texas. He goes, yeah, we, we send people over to Brian, man. So, you know, and I already sent some stuff over, and Brian checked you guys out. He thinks it's good. He, he, he wants you to give him a call. I'm just, cool. I gave him a call. He answered, and, hey, Brian, it's Pete DeLuke, you know, from, from Sled. He goes, oh, yeah, man. What's up, bro? I go, he goes, nah, you guys want to work with me? I go, he goes, yeah. He goes, well, we're going to be in town next week. Bring me down a demo, whatever you got. Let me check out what you guys have going. So we gave it to him. 
And he called us up. He says, you guys want to come to the sack? Let's do some recording. Let's shoot the breeze and this and that. So he said, yeah, we took the whole band up there. Now, we had pretty much had the album had written. It was our third album, Insane Life. We had it pretty much had written by that point. And Brian said, okay, he picked out, let's pick out a few tunes. He goes, I want to rearrange a few things. Let's add and change some stuff. And uh, about the third night, he, we're out, he, I'm sitting next to him in the control room. He goes, he goes outside, and we were having an issue. Lance was having, my, Lance Good, our bass player, was just having, just struggling with a bass part. And he goes, let me, he goes, man, I thought you told me all these cats could play to a click track. <laughs> so he goes, let me ask you something. He goes, you dickheads want to go out on tour this year with us? We're doing a, full, a whole national tour. It's like 30 shows and like 40, 40 nights or something. You got to get your own tour bus. You'll get paid too. But you guys, you've never done a national tour? We said, no, we never had. He goes, well, if you want. It, it, you, and so we're like, yeah, you know what, man? Yeah. We're down, baby. Yeah. Let's do it. So, you know, we've, we've seen the country. In fact, we opened up in, uh, uh, what was the name of the city? North Dakota. Yeah, but where was it? It was Newtown, Four North Bears. Dakota. Four Bears Casino. We were in Newtown. I don't know if any of you listeners, any people <laughs> ever even know we're in Newtown, North Dakota. But I will tell you, it took three and a half days for us to get there. Oh, shit. And it was in early October. There was frost and snow. <laughs> we got there, and there was a blizzard October oh, 17th. Yeah, it was. We're up well, five miles from the Canadian border, and there's we're getting pounded with snow. Like, when we when we left San Diego, it was like in the nineties. Yeah, and so we, we got there. On, we got there in shorts and a tank yeah, top, and yeah, we're like, well, okay, well, this yeah. is ridiculous. <laughs> and then when we got off the bus, they're like looking at us like we're nuts. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, and these then, are the cats from San Diego, man. Look how they roll. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was classic. Yeah, so, it so was speaking classic. Speaking of like places you've played, what's the sketchiest place you've ever played oh, at? We gotta tell the show. The workplace, oh, uh, Providence, uh, Rhode Island. No, 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 no workplace no, theater in Alabama. Oh no, 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 no. I got oh, even better. Yeah, yeah. Bama. But hold on, we were in Hardin, Montana. This is a great story. You guys, we she, stopped. She asked a sketchy Hardin. place, and so here's the we're in this one horse little town with a stop plate swinging. I mean, no joke. And is that where we almost got robbed? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. These guys from a local tribe, American Indian Cats. So first there's like two of them. Like, hey, man, what's up? What's with the bus? You know, what's up? Oh, we're a band, man. We're on tour. We're on our way to North Dakota. And this. And, oh, cool, man. What, what do you guys got in the trailer? I go, well, you know, we got, you know, some stuff. So, oh, yeah, man. So we're getting food and hanging, rapping with these guys. So, you know, three more dudes roll up. And then five more guys in another car. Before you know it, there's like 20 or 22 dudes outside. And they're all asking us all kind of, we're starting. So Eric, my guitar, I got to give Eric credit. He goes, hey, man. He goes, I don't know, got a good feeling about this at all, brother. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 1030 at night. And they're all like, yeah, we want to see inside the trailer and come on the bus. And we're like, oh, man, you know what, man? Carlos is in there sleeping, our driver. We got to be cool. And so we walk in and <laughs> I look at Carlos and go, start the bus, man. He, oh, wait a minute. I said, start the bus. <laughs> and we're like, hey, guys, we got a bell, man. We, yeah, <laughs> this guy's like just surrounded the bus. We just got an eerie feel. And Dino we had and bows I, and arrows and TVs oh, and stuff. Oh, oh, yeah. Hitting our, I, hitting our thing. Oh, it's yeah. crazy. <laughs> and, oh, yeah. You know, without getting any of you guys in trouble, because I don't know if you're married or not, but out of all of the band members, who gets the most pussy? <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the problem. <laughs> um, on that tour, I was living with my fiance at the time, who I wound up marrying. So... I fixed everybody up. Oh, okay. And there so Carrie's playing Memphis at the time, and he sees this blonde girl, and she wants to meet Carrie, and she likes the band, and he probably wants to shoot me for this thing, you know? <laughs> so I introduced him to this girl, and uh, they went out for a while, and, you know, he pretty much took her on she the tour nice bus. She butt, that's for sure. She, she <laughs> no, she's on, on the bus. <laughs> Next day, we're like, hey, who's well, that? Who's that, 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 that chick, dude, from Memphis? No. Yeah, he goes, did she, I just dropped, she just dropped her whole life and jumped on a tour bus with a rock and roll band. We're like, holy 1969, Batman. That's pretty cool. <laughs> that, so, sh that should have been a red flag right there. Let me tell you. Well, well, in the <laughs> old days, when, you know, when rock and rollers like would be, you know, Two at, a dime, two at a time for a dime kind of mentality, you know, you two broads at a time, whatever. That was great and dandy, but now we're on our first national tour, and we got to sleep every night, and it's not easy to sleep in a moving bus. No. And you're out there with a band that has a rabid following, mm -hmm. and yeah. we had made a bet with the bass player because he said to me, hey, guys, you come out with Tesla, don't get bummed out when you get booed off the stage. And we're like, yeah. I go, what? No, nah, man. No, not, so man. let me tell the story, Pilgrim. All right, so <laughs> he's like, you know, you guys are going to experience this crazy shit, man. You're going to get booed off. People ain't going to like you one no, night. No, we're not. <laughs> That's funny. So finally, we're at the last show. 
we're in North Carolina. No, we're in South, South Carolina. South Carolina. The South Carolina. last night of the show. And we've done now 20-something shows. And here we are, and we've never been booed off. People are screaming. We're getting encores, right? So I looked at Brian, and I go, hey, man, I thought we were going to get booed off the stage. He told <laughs> me that like we got to prepare. He goes, dude, I don't know how to explain it. i seen Pop Evil, all these platinum-selling bands come out on the road. And these motherfuckers all got booed off the stage. I don't know how wow. the fuck you guys... Got to a 30 or 20 some odd date tour and never once got booed off the stage. If anything, yeah. one night Jeff Keats sitting on the side of the stage and we we're in Ohio. Oh, that was great, man. Where were we? In that, the Toledo. Army, the Army. Toledo. We were all Ohio. pissed off. We, we, you know, we get in there. You know, almost every night on the tour, we're getting hospitality. Like with, Sli with uh, Tesla, how we're getting fed. You know, we do locker rooms, you know, dressing rooms. We get to Toledo. It's a shithole. I mean, the place venue was great, and the people were awesome in Toledo. We love those guys. We're still our fans. There's no hot water in our dressing room. We're not getting fed. Everybody's on the showers. I came on the bus. I go, you know what? Fuck this, man. Let's fucking light this town on fire. Put your old fucking rock and roll shirts on. Let's go out there and kick some ass. We blew the lid off that place it was great and then we were packing up ready to get off the stage and jeff keith the singer at tesla comes out hell no motherfuckers you guys yeah. gotta get your fucking ass out there there these people are going crazy for your you name he said get, get your ass out there. out there and play another encore and we did and we did yeah it was great now here's that the crazy awesome. now this story. this kind of goes back to your to your gig no question. So we meet this dude that night that owns the local strip oh, bar. Oh, oh, oh my God. favorite. Okay, and he's like, dude, uh, your band's sick. I love you. Um, what are you guys doing after the show? We're like, well, what do you mean? He goes, well, I own the strip bar, and I, all the booze you guys can drink and all the broads you guys can hang with, man, oh, man. it's on me and my club. So he was single at the time. <laughs> Eric, I think, was single at the time. Or maybe he wasn't. No, he was going through a breakup because his chick was out running around on him. Lance's old lady was like trying to control him. She had like a ball and chain around him. He didn't. He didn't waver. But Adam, my sound guy at the time, you know, before he got all <laughs> fucked up on drugs, these guys were like having a great old time. Eric and I, were, we, we, Eric I'll and take I, a line from Tony Soprano. These guys were coos hounds. Eric, <laughs> you know, what I mean, Eric and I drank a bottle of Grey Goose. We drank a bottle of Grey Goose. We were oh. out of our fucking minds, drunk. Chicks are trying to give us lines. They're doing dances for it. They're like, hey, you guys are da 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 da. We heard about you. We're like, oh yeah, baby, you da da da. Want my autograph? Yes, yeah, sign it right here. Well, guess where I signed it at? I mean, yeah. Uh, Another, right on, right on the areola, right. Yeah. Another, hey, another great Just sexual story was, it. okay, this is great. We got the oh. brother of the drummer from Tesla oh. on our bus, Tony. He's Alabama. A nut. Okay. Oh, man, this is now funny shit. somehow I'm out there that night, and this hot chick decides she wants to hang with me, and she's like, "Dude, you know, come on, come to my house, do this." I couldn't, you know what I mean? Like I, I could have, but I couldn't. So the tour manager for Tesla at the time, Jimmy Dean, he's like, dude, are you hooking up with that or what? He's from England. I go, nah, bro. He goes, dude, you got to hook me up with it. So I did. I hooked him up with it. Well, that night, we're playing the Workplay Theater in Alabama. And all these chicks decide they're, gonna, they're all strippers. Birmingham. They come in and they want to be on the bus after the show. Well, my boy Lance flies his old lady in, right? Oh, this is great. Okay, stuff. and oh then they're fighting God. the whole time. She's out banging one of Carrie's friends behind Lance's back. And Sean O'Toole smashing and grabbing it any way he can, you know. Well, this chick decides. All right, so, like, we're all in the back, the back, back living room, right? I happen to be in the middle of the bus. She comes rolling through the door. Well, she let goes, me tell I the story. To... All these chicks come on up to us, right? And Tony's into it. This dude's, like, kind of God rest his soul, he passed, but he was oh, a great was dude. Great, and he's like, Dino, bring them all back to me, bro. I'm single. So next thing you know, this chick's, you know, give him a hand job. We're all there watching. We're laughing. Me and Carrie are crying. Right? That's some determination on his part. And these chicks start part. stripping. They all start taking their clothes off and shit. Well, here's Lance back here, and his old lady decides <laughs> she's going to bust on the bus and come back to uh -oh. the party. Uh -oh. Open the uh -oh. door. Open the, I need to talk to Lance. I'm like, you need to get off the bus, honey. So, you like, I'm, going, I'm like a, a defensive back stop in the middle of the aisle. <laughs> I can't come in, man. And then Carrie comes out and goes, nah, man, you know. And we're all taking turns blocking her from coming out. Finally, I said, dude, you better get in the bunk and act like you just woke up or something, yeah, bro. Because your old lady's ahead. on a warpath. Wow. And she wants blood, bro. Yeah, I mean, does. we don't need no blood on our hands. You know what I mean? Oh, that's hilarious. And you so, guys have such good stories. I bet we could probably do. You, you, so there, Tony just absolutely had a free-for-all that night. Nice. Jimmy had a free-for-all. And all these stripper chicks were on the bus. And these other 
guys and me, we were flat tires, man. Nothing happened. It was crazy. Could have happened, yeah. but yeah. You know. Well, I think we could probably do like a, a five hour long podcast just on great memories, man. just the yeah. touching the iceberg of the, your guys' that. story and stuff. But I do want to get a couple more questions in here. Um, how did you guys start uh, a re your radio show? So, um, so I've been raising money for a startup company, kind of like WhatsApp. It's called Voxox for about almost 14 years. And uh, <clears throat> it's been such a long stretch for us. Uh, you know, we were on fire for a while. Things got slow. We're on fire. So, and we finally launched into like Malaysia and we have this, this over the top app that can make long, long distance phone calls. And, you know, it's like a WhatsApp kind of, kind of product. But um, so there was kind of a, 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 a dead point about a year ago when I figured, you know, we better pick up the pace and get Vox Ox on the radio. It needs to be on the radio now. It's, it's a, we got three different apps. We got Vox Direct, Vox Direct Connect, and you got Cloud Phone, which is killer. So <clears throat> we need to get it on the radio. So I called one of our investors knowing that she worked for KCBQ uh, or, or uh, what's that, Salem. Okay. And her name was Rowena. And, and I said, hey, Rowena, can you and Todd hook, hook me up with Vox Ox on the radio? She goes, matter of fact, it's funny you say that. So as soon as she called me back and told me what the prices were, and I said, you're, you're saying on a Saturday night, that's how much it costs to blah, 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 you know, to, to have a show. And that's when I called Dean. I said, Dean, and I even w walked in it, to my wife the, at the moment, and I said, hey, what, what, do you, what would you think if I just started a radio show all of a sudden? And I called Dino, and, and Dino was in agreement to it. And uh, so Rowena, I called her back, and I says, okay, um, we'll take the Vox Ox time, but we also want our own time. And she goes, that's, that's, that's a good one. That's pretty funny. I says, what's so funny about it? She goes, well, you gotta be, you gotta be something already. I says, well, we'll be fine. I said, we got four albums of the material, and we're gonna be called Swell Radio. And she goes, are you serious? I says, damn, damn right we're serious. So we did it. and We called Ozzy. Said, are you in? He goes, I'm in. Yeah. So I said, Pete's like, well, if you're going to do this. So we need a concept. I no, two things that we needed to do. What he said was, hey, if you guys are going to do this, uh, I want to talk to a friend of mine on radio to consult with us. Absolutely. And, and give me her opinion on how this whole thing up. There and she is. Cool. Radio okay. Queenie. Well, it took a while because she was still under contract, so she couldn't oh, join okay. the show. But I want to say late August this year. Pete was like, come on, man, come on the show. And she goes, you know what? I love the concept. I love this music. I love that you're bringing unsigned artists. And a couple of big-time musicians, really, really, John Moyer today is saying this is an awesome concept. Yeah. And so Mr. Cole liked it, too. And she said, you know what? I'm going to be the producer from this point on, and I'm going to come on the show. And in September, she was, a star was born. Again. Well, let me chime in one more time and say... Besides the swell radio concept that we were already talking about years ago, I also thought that it's not fair. Ever since the iPod came out and kind of destroyed the industry, you know, in 03 when it when it, when they made the iPod, it ruined the music industry. It took a 60 60 percent industry down to a six percent industry. It was pretty much ruined it. Wow. And so at that point, I'm like, you know what? It's not fair for the unsigned artists because there's so many artists out there that are awesome that don't get to be heard. Ever when he said that, they're not signed. When so he said that, I said RFUA, so Radio for Unsigned Artists. I said, yeah. where I said, where the rock star meets the rising star was the slogan. I came up with the concept. I said, what we're going to do is we're going to bring the, the, the celebrity musician with the unsigned artist and we're going to do exchange some ideas, some thoughts, a little critique, you know, whatever. I said, but it's a new and unique type of concept for a music radio type talk show. So it's really taken off. But plus, we knew nothing about how to be DJs. And that's DJs when I, were, were I called Co. and I said, look, I said, I'm waving, already waving a white flag. I mean, but, but we're getting it. But I said, we need your help, Co. So. All right, now, this is what Kerry didn't mention to you. Kerry had been involved in taking young artists, breaking him, working for this record company called Ripe Records. He worked for this dude named Mike Alvarez. And they took this young girl and they broke her. I mean, she almost had severe, serious, major fame. She wound up on tour with Aaron Neville's. Oh, or one of the, Aaron Carter's. Song. Aaron Carter. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, and these guys broke this the girl. The they did a demo for her. I actually played on some of the, I played a bunch of drum parts on the demo. And him and Mike took this young girl and broke her, man. And they wound up on a real tour. And things, that was like Carrie's first involvement in music management and seeing how things worked three years later we were actually doing it with Slay. nice and it was cool how that broke yeah. but it, it they just you know it went hand in hand kind of but it was his vision and he had already done this so it was kind of cool you forgot all about that huh bro yeah when jamie was uh my old boss mike 
who our guitar player, Mike Feminelli, introduced me to this guy, Mike Alvarez. Um, he had found uh, Jamie at the, at the National Anthem at the Padre game singing when she oh, was 11 wow. years old. Okay. So and he walked up to her dad and said, hey, uh, you could be there, but can I produce your kid? By that time, she was 12 when we started it and blew up. And at the time, it was uh, it was uh, uh, Britney Spears' attorney at the time was was took us took us on at that point, wow. and then we got on Aaron Carter's tour. And Heck yeah! I made one mistake one night too. We were in Alabama. And there's a bunch of little kids around, and me and the dad were way up in the, in the crowd, but we weren't off the stage where it was safe. We were in the crowd, and all of a sudden Jamie goes, "Hey, that's my dad up there, and that's Carrie, my manager. You guys want a free CD?" And all these kids just run like crazy. This like pterodactyls running with you know they just ripping you up i got scratched all over the place yeah. <laughs> it was crazy it was good was crazy. Yeah. well it's a great concept i love i love running the sound for it yeah when you guys first came in so where i work you know it's it's there's a lot of eclectic different shows all kinds mainly talk shows we don't have too many music shows so they said todd you're gonna be running this heavy metal show i said heck yeah man i love music Come from you know music. Uh, the first station I worked for was music. So you guys came in, and I'm like, "What the hell, man? What is gonna happen here?" You guys were hitting me with like each. Of you guys were asking me questions at the same time, and I knew Co. I knew Co. because she is a legend here in San Diego, and I was nervous about her. Like, how is she gonna be? Is she gonna be so strict because she's you know the professional? So I was in awe of her, and then you guys, <laughs> I didn't know what I was getting myself into. But uh, you guys are awesome, and I love working with you guys. Love the music, the unsigned artists, the stuff I've never heard. I I, I love it. Every time you guys give me stuff, I end up burning a CD of it and rocking it. I really do love the music. Kudos to Cole Lewis because she whipped our ass. And she, she did quick, man. Big she time. sure did. You know, she, she always did, says man. it's like hurting. She's cats our mentor. And she, she, and it's, give me credit for knowing how to make one of the first big moves. And I say, if we're gonna do this, boys, we gotta get going. Yeah, we give Pete credit for going. bringing her involved. I mean, we've been professional musicians. We got national touring experience, signing regularly. We have, a, but we knew nothing about being radio. And I tell you, we had met. And we're Co. Really, we love it. I mean, we had great. met Pete and I had met Co in like ninety, oh, yeah, eighty nine, yeah, at the Bacchanal okay. when Paula joined the band. Wow. And they, she had worked KGB nights at the Navy base. We won a San Diego Music Award, Nemesis. This is back in ninety one, the very first year of the Music Awards, and we were participating in a, at a, at a, a competition, a, a battle of the bands called Rock Wars. And we figured out, oh, you know, Cole's like, oh, I'll go to Humphrey. So, well, she was going to be there. I'm like, yeah, pick up our award for her. She's just joking. What we think, do we think we were going to win? And then we steer at the end, and she shows us at a box, and she goes, you guys won. We go, we won? I'll never Meanwhile, we're so getting cool. disqualified from the Rock Wars, which we probably would have won because they had the whole list of, 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 of you know, do's and don'ts. Yeah. And one was you can't use profanity. Paul McLennan, our singer at the time. Paul, uh, we didn't, none of us cared. Yeah. Paul's like, comes out, he goes, how the fuck you doing, San Diego? Right away, we're disqualified. Before we even play our first song. I mean, <laughs> we're done. That's funny. So RFUA, Swell Radio RFUA is on. 1170 AM, 96.1 FM, every Saturday night at 6 p.m. And do you, at 7 p.m. I'm sorry, 7, 7, p.m. <laughs> 7 p.m. And do you guys podcast it as well? No, we, we don't. Though. Just on there. We okay. don't really need to do that. Okay, yeah, for sure. You should definitely uh, listen. So 7 p.m., 1170 AM, 96.1 FM, if you're in North County. Uh, FM Radio. 961. Also, uh, the answer sandiego.com, and you can get the show uh, through the World Wide Web and click yes, on Swell Radio you and listen uh, live. iHeart app, the TuneIn app. Yep. We you just can. released a brand new video, and you can catch that on YouTube. Staring at the screens. Staring, Staring at the screens. screens. We're also, actually going to play that. It's also on right now. No, the Sled website, sledweb.com. Sledweb.com. Yeah, and all the shows, previous shows from, every, from number one yeah. all the way to probably close to 40 now are all available on sledweb.com Sled every radio show also we, we we take submissions from unsigned artists it's us it's email us at swell radio rfua at yahoo.com and if you're listening to the podcast tonight you're up and coming sparring send us your stuff man we want to check it out get you on the radio is show. that just rock or is it all types pretty of much music? well you know we sort of have boundaries but we sort of exceeded the boundaries because we, if, we, if we hear something especially we'll yeah especially we hear if we hear somebody who's good we go we all like sort of put it pure our ears up and go hey we got to play this there these guys or she or he or whoever they're and i tell you some of the talent with some of the people that we know the celebrity people musicians that we know some of the talent they're working with we, you heard it today uh, earlier yeah. on the show i mean you're there's musicians and young talent out there yes. that blows your mind including a kid who's 17 who just turned 18 from sacramento yeah. and i'll tell you what man really? these guys 
Wow. And you guys are a great outlet for people to hear this stuff. Otherwise, how are you going to hear it? Well, no, you're not. You know, you're not. here's what it comes down to, man. We're passing the baton. Yeah. Good. We want the younger generation, you man. We want young guys to be where we were at their age. Yeah. And we were doing that, rock and roll, partying, you know, whatever, man, because it, I guess when you do what we do, it kind of keeps you on the younger, youth, youthful slash useful side. You but, you know, like I said, pass the baton, you want to keep the fire going, man. You want to keep it alive, keep it burning, and, and that's what it's really what it comes down to. Yeah, um, to add to that, um, um, I'm not really a big Facebook person, but I decided to help the show because I didn't know how many, like, you know, uh, you know, listeners are going to be listening because we really have a way to find out. So I started accepting all these all these people from Russia, from London, oh, from yeah, okay. all over the place. Seoul, Korea, got wow. people from Turkey. You know, so I went from 300 uh, f Facebook friends in the beginning of COVID to like 5,000, and, and I accepted them because they would all chime in and watch us on the radio. So that was cool. I didn't want to talk to all these people and stuff, but awesome. there's some hotties in there. But, well, you know, a lot I'm, of I'm these married, people so whatever. from all over the country. <laughs> A lot of people from all over the world have actually submitted and been on the show. Yeah, that's awesome. That's pretty well, cool. Music is universal. It yeah, is. It's it is. universal language. Well, Dino, Pete, Carrie, thank you so much for this segment. Stick around. Next, we're going to be playing How Dago Are You? All right. Welcome back to the San Diego Highlighter Show. Now is the part of the show that we play the game that's sweeping the nation. It's called How Dago Are You? Serena, take it away. All right. Okay. So the first question. The, the way you chime in is your name. Your name is your buzzer. buzzer. Your name is your buzzer. Got it. Yeah. So I happen to like this place. So question. This rock venue named after a drug in the novel Brave New World, originally downtown before taking over an AMC theater and sports arena. Co. What is Soma? Yeah. Correct. Ding, 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 ding. Good job. Good job. Ding, 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 ding. In this edition, we failed to mention this is all venues here in San Diego. These are oh, all okay. since you guys are rock and rollers. So. Okay, question number two. So co has got one point. Question number two. This bar in Allied Gardens has booze Pete. instead of... Uh, Pal Joey's. No. Let me <clears throat> finish the question. Sorry. This bar in Allied Gardens has booze instead of books, but is named after a place... Pete, you check the library. <laughs> we got to chime in with your name. Carrie gets it. Okay, let's go. Carrie doesn't listen it's to the rules. Oh, sorry. So... Get that mic uh, in here. Question, question number three. Jewel, Jason Mraz, and Steve Poltz are just a few San Diego musicians discovered at this coffee shop. Co, what is Java Joe's? Yeah, ding, ding, ding. good job, good job. All right, we only got a couple more here. We got two more here. Close kicking ass. She is. I'm grown hour. This famous downtown venue no longer exists, but we Fourth and B, Dino. Yeah, Dino, you got it. Nice. Good job. Hello, Where's... Vincent Puma. This is the last question. This one is worth. Uh, this one's worth th a possible three points. Oh, and I happen to love this place too. Currently named North Island Credit Union Amphitheater. Can you give three of the four? Four's Amphitheater. P okay. P Cricket Wireless Amphitheater. Mm-hmm. Core's Amphitheater, and North. County Coast Amphitheater. Or what was one? That's what it's currently yeah. named. But sleep, sleep, sleep train. Carrie, sleep, yeah. sleep train. Yeah, sleep train. All right, you guys all win. Ding, 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 ding. You guys are officially all Dago. Very good job. Thanks again, guys, for coming on. We really appreciate it. Also, we are doing a giveaway for our Instagram followers. We're going to give away a couple CDs of Sled, which is pretty awesome. Thank you, Carrie, for providing the CDs. Anything else you'd like to say before we close out on this? No, honestly... I want to say that was a great show. It was nice hearing people in a different part of the music industry besides rap. So thank you guys very much for Thanks being Thanks for on having here. us. Hit, hit him with your guys' motto. <laughs> Don't forget No, we got to, we got to do it. <laughs> Sam Carey, there was one thing, what? You don't want to miss this one, baby. And don't forget our slogan. Don't, don't forget, forget to rock. rock. All right, until next time, San Diego, keep doing it because you're doing it well.